Hey guys. Um, so right now I'm going to show you my DVD collection or my media collection because there's like CDs and VHS tapes and DVDs and Blu-rays over there. Um, but I'm going to show you it just kind of as a wall of stuff and I will point out certain items because I've attempted to do an overview where I actually put every single item on the shelf and I know other people have had enormous collections and have done exactly the same thing but they are tedious as hell to to watch not just to do uh, I've watched quite a few in my time don't mind sitting down to them myself but even when I do it for your guys's benefit it's a boring waste of time I've I've tried to do it so many times, they take hours out of my life, not just yours watching it. So, trust me, this is probably the best option because I've got at least 400 titles over there. So, let's get to it. This is the current extent of my collection thus far. These two rather hefty... Um, shelving units here now uh let me see if i can rotate this around yeah that should be all right so let's take a good old scan over this oh first off let me show you what posters i got in here um over there i've got peabody and sherman which i was lucky to find at michael's arts and crafts i finally have a picture of Cats Don't Dance, which I've wanted for years. This is a 24 by uh, 27 by 40, which is the only way you can get it, which is very, very nice. Then I have Captain America Winter Soldier, Treasure Planet, and my favorite anime franchise. I, I really don't know. I get I keep thinking Lupin the Third is my favorite franchise, and it probably is, but I suppose this is the series I have the most fondness for, so I really don't know. But it's it's either one or two. Um, it's called Slayers, and I'll get to some of those in a moment. Down here I have my figurines. Um, this is a girl with a dragon, a ceramic cat, Tinkerbell, Vanellope Von Schweetz, two characters from DigiCarrot, um, there's Dudley Puppy, Kitty Catswell, Snap Trap, and the Chameleon. And then Rainbow Dash with a couple of other smaller ponies. On the top here we have the 50th anniversary collection of Ben-Hur. We have the Nadia the Secret of Blue Water anime tin box set, which um, was the last way you could get it. They did release a Blu-ray. But I haven't been really eager to get it because there's so many other things coming out this year. Uh, we, we got three new Ghibli Blu-rays coming, so I'm, I'm aiming for that. And then there's the Digi Carrot box set right there, which I was very happy to find for 30 bucks. I really I kind of realized that I don't actually like this, the show that much, at least these OVA uh, mini-sodes. But it's okay. It's okay. It's it's a nice thing to have, because I did have fondness for it a long while ago. Now, on the starting from the side here, we have things like Cosmos, um, Lord of the Rings, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Harry Potter uh, Sorcerer's Stone Blu-ray Ultimate Edition. I still want to get Chamber of Secrets Ultimate Edition and the Goblet of Fire, but the rest of them, I'll just get them in the normal box set. A um, couple of Alfred Hitchcock films, a couple of uh, Wes Anderson, is that right? I, yes, Wes Anderson, sorry. Keep think, keep making the mistake sometimes of Wes Anderson and Wes Craven. Because um, there's Paul W.S. Anderson as well. Then there's Planet of the Apes, uh, The Prestige, The Dark Knight, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Matrix, um... From Russia with Love and You're on You Only Live Twice. Then we have the Star Trek movie collection and the first two um, recent Star Trek films. Then down here we have more a couple of other fantasy films: Big Trouble in Little China, uh, 
Scott Pilgrim, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, Tim Burton collection there of three movies. And then we have my Disney collection, which is all on Blu-rays here. Uh, this is about half of the entire Disney catalog, I believe. I am, have been meaning to get Cinderella for a while, because that's one of the only old ones I don't have. And then we have my other CGI animated films with Shrek 2, Kung Fu Panda, Rise of the Guardians, Hotel Transylvania, Despicable Me, Rango, and then Coraline, which is my favorite stop-motion film. Um, very happy to see American Tale finally make it on Blu-ray. It looks as good as you could probably expect it to. I'm still waiting for The Land Before Time. Then there's The Chipmunk Adventure, which I never thought would make it on a Blu-ray. I'll be getting that on my... Uh, Cinema Warehouse blog very soon. Come on. There we go. Then those are my three Ghibli Blu-rays, Nausicaa, Castle in the Sky, and Howl's Moving Castle. I just purchased My Neighbor Tortoro, so that'll be put there in that blank space. Then I have uh, Summer Wars, King of Thorn, Oblivion Island, Cat Planet Cuties... <laughs> Uh, the entire Eureka 7 series, the entire Soul Eater series, Panty and Stocking, Fujiko Mine, and the uh, original Tenchi Muyo OVA. Then we have my DVD collection. I've split them up intentionally because I want to slowly have these Blu-rays encroach on my DVDs until it's nothing but Blu-rays, or at least as most as I can get. Um... So then we have all of the Harry Potter films except the um, the final two-parter. This I just got in the mail today. I, uh, I, I just made a video about that, and I'm going to be doing a blog entry about it. Then a um, couple of Bruce Campbell films, uh, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine. That'll be on the blog soon enough. The um, The Hallmark version of Alice in Wonderland with... Martin Short, perfectly as the Mad Hatter. A um, couple of Disney old cartoon collections and documentary bits, which are I'm very glad to have, especially... Let me see. Tomorrowland. This is some nice stuff. Tomorrowland documentaries. Really awesome stuff on that one. Then uh, the Goofy movie, Beauty and the Beast. The DuckTales film, which I actually purchased through the Disney Rewards catalog after putting in all my codes. That's also how I got this Tron Blu-ray. So very very much worth it if you buy all these movies. You, you can actually get some re reasonably good stuff with all your codes. Um, I also actually have um, Giant's First Steps, which is a collection of original senior class short films from um, the college years of all of these animators. Th these are their senior thesis films that they've collected together on this DVD. Um, I'm very surprised my sister was able to get this for me because she attended one of these screenings of these old cartoons and these short film festival type animated pieces. Then I have Banjo the Woodpile Cat, which was Don Bluth's original short film project while at Disney to convince investors to help him make The Secret of Nim. And then uh, this is actually American Tale 2 and an American Tale 3. Now trust me when I say American Tale 3 is not a bad movie. It's actually really well animated by a wonderful Japanese animation company called Tokyo Movie Shinsha. And I wrote a whole article about it on my Cinema Warehouse blog. You should totally check out my review on that. Um, Tokyo Movie Shinsha also did How I Spent My Vacation, which is probably one of their best foreign productions here in America. Or for American companies. Then I got uh, Balto 1 and 2, The Jetsons, Once Upon a Forest, uh, this weird Noah's Ark film, which actually went a little viral a couple of years back, I think. Um, the most infamous scene, of course, has been taken out of it. It's been deleted from this newly released version, which is kind of just kind of depressing, actually. Um, if you know about this film, then you probably know what scene I'm talking about. I don't know if this is getting blurry on you. 
Then uh, we have the Wonderful World of Puss in Boots and Animal Treasure Island, which were both animated by Hayao Miyazaki when he worked at Toei Animation Studios. We have his and Isao Takahata's early short films, Panda Go Panda, which includes both short films from 1970, uh, I believe 1973 and 74. And then we have Kiki's Delivery Service, Porco Rosso, Princess Mononoke, both of which here are going to be released on Blu-ray in November. Whisper of the Heart, which I still have to get. Steam Boy, Metropolis, Escaflone, the movie, Sea Prince and the Fire Child, another Toei film. Uh, Voices of a Distant Star, Makoto Shinkai's original homemade independent short film. I just purchased his Children Who Chase Lost Voices. Um, yesterday so that should be arriving with Tortoro tomorrow then we have robot carnival which i did a review on just a short while ago very fascinating anthology collection and memories which was another thing put together by katsuhiro otomo who directed the opening and ending sequences of robot carnival this was amazing Absolutely stunning stuff, especially the first short film called um, Magnetic Rose. Definitely something you want to pick up. It's a little, it's out of print now, but it's not hard to get a hold of a copy, thank goodness. Then, I uh, can't really see this one here, but this is Panda and the Magic Serpent. I've owned this for quite some time, but never got around to seeing it yet, but I soon will. Uh, Catnapped, this was... Let me see, I think this was a Katsuhiro Tomo thing, too. Let me see. Takashi Nakamura. I think it was written. No. Huh. I know he had... I know this guy had something to do with Akira, so... That's why... I, that's actually why I got it. Uh, then we have Satoshi Kon's Tokyo Godfathers. That was a, a surprising, really well-made movie. I mean, I, I knew it was going to be well-made, but I didn't know I was actually going to love it as much as I did. That's what surprised me. Then we have my entire Lupin the Third collection thus far, except for Fujiko Mine, which is down there. Uh, we have the original 1971 series, the live-action movie. If you didn't know there was a live-action movie, yes, there is. And it's... <laughs> It's really nutty, really wacky. It has little no, little to nothing to do with the original manga or this previous TV series, but it's pretty special all on its own. So I suggest you check that out before it's out of print, which I actually think it is already. Uh, then we have the two Red Jacket Loop in the Third episodes directed by... Uh, no, wait, this is uh, Mystery of Mamo. That's a little later. Okay, this is the Mystery of Mamo... VHS. This is the same version from Streamline that was put on a DVD really early in the DVD revolution. This is the Secret of Mamo from Manga Entertainment. This is the very same version of that. Oh no, this is Genion. Yeah, this is uh, Genion and Pioneer. So that's the version uh, with the same voice actors from the Red Jacket series that they put together. This is from Manga, which has the same dub and same video from this one but it's from the UK. I bought it because I thought it would have the UK dub from 96 but it doesn't. Thankfully Discotech took all four existing dubs and put them onto this version which is definitely the version you want to have because then you can compare all four versions of the dialogue. Then we have the Streamline Castle of Cagliostro with Mr. Bob Bergen who currently does Porky Pig for Warner Brothers. Uh, he, he voices Porky Pig. So he was Lupin the Third in this version. Um, then we have the two manga entertainment releases. This is their original version, and this is their special edition. This is a little hard to get a hold of now. It's about 56 bucks if you look on Amazon. Um, Discotech now owns the rights to it, thankfully, and they will be releasing a new DVD at the end of the year. And they will be releasing a Blu-ray, thank goodness, uh, either by Christmas or next year. I am so excited for that, because that is my favorite movie ever. Then we have The Greatest Capers. These are two episodes from the Red Jacket series, directed by Hayao Miyazaki under a pseudonym. Um, Legend of the Gold of Babylon, probably the weirdest Lupin the Third movie besides this one. 
Then the Fuma Conspiracy, Bye Bye Liberty Crisis, the Hemingway Papers, Voyage to Danger, Dragon of Doom, Pursuit of Harry Miles Treasure, Dead or Alive, Island of Assassins, Twilight Gemini, Farewell to Nostradamus, The Columbus Files, Crisis in Tokyo, Missed by a Dollar, Episode Zero, Green vs. Red, and um, that's about it for now. Then there's Case Close Season 1 and Season 5, the first movie, Time Bomb Skyscraper, and the 14th Target, the Pat Labor movie, the original dub, I believe, and then the special edition release, limited collector's edition release, which actually has all the storyboards in it. Then we have the Hyper Police Collection. This is a really awesome, underrated um, uh, crime series, I guess you'd call it. But it's like in an alternate universe where half the people in the world have transmorphed into uh, animal hybrids. Then we have K.O. Beast, which I sort of kind of lay all these out in what's related to one another, if you haven't noticed. Because here we go from fantasy to slightly less fantasy. You know, you go from Hugo to Benjamin Button. Then you go into Alfred Hitchcock, which turns into back into a little more fantasy. And then it goes to just hard action, which uh, transitions into, I guess, Matrix should be before this, but it's more technological, and then it gets less technological, which then turns into more technological and goes into space. And that's sort of how the rest of it's laid out. Because in here, you go from crime capers to solving crimes, to solving crimes with robots, to solving crimes with animals, animal, you know, anthropomorphic people, to being in a fantasy realm with anthropomorphic people, then going to robot anthropomorphic people with cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku, and then going to just android people with Saber Marionette J, which goes into superhero people with Project Aiko, then goes back into space with Tenchi Muyo the movie, Plastic Little, Dirty Pair, uh, Irresponsible Captain Tyler, Complete Space Pirate Mito, which then goes into Urusei Yatsura. And then that transitions into all the wacky stuff involving spirits, which you have Jungle de EQ, uh, Puni Puni Poemi, Geo Breeders. Um, this one is good. This one is really good. Uh, Bludgeoning Angel Dokro Chan. <laughs> Just makes me crack up looking at it. Uh, probably the most insane anime I've ever seen, and so totally worth it. I mean, this this was a lucky find, because getting the dubbed version is really hard, and I was lucky this showed up as cheap as it was when I found it. Because um, it's not nearly as funny in Japanese, if you're an American watching it, of course. Uh, yeah, so then there's uh, Geo Breeders, Bludgeoning Angel Dokurochan, R.O.D., Reader Die, Phantom Quest Corps. Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust, Cutie Honey, Shamanic Princess, Dragon Half, um, Magical Play, Fooly Cooly, Ninja Nonsense, one of my favorite comedic animes ever. I still don't know how to pronounce this. Is it like Ten? Is it Tenjo Tenj? I have no idea. I, I I wish I had something that actually told me what it, how to say it. Um, Maze. I assume it's not just straight maze, it's maze, but I couldn't even get through any of this. This is just insipid and stupid and wow. Yeah, I don't even want it in my collection, much like as I don't want the uh, the burn up, the original burn up OVA. Um, now, I actually didn't know this was a bootleg when I got it, so I'm kind of just stuck with it, but this is Gokudo. This is one of the other awesome fantasy comedy series out there. Then we have uh, Ruin Explorers, the um, El Hazard series, Those Who Hunt Elves, that's a funny one, Dragon Ball Season 2 and Season 3. Uh, now we're getting serious. We got Orphan, the complete series, Slayers, Seasons 1, 2, and 3, which includes Next and Try, Slayers Revolution and Evolution R, the Slayers Motion Pictures, which... If you're a fan of fantasy and a fan of anime and a fan of animation and a fan of just everything, you should own this. Own these movies. These are so worth it. Absolutely awesome 90s awesomeness. That's what it is. It's 90s awesomeness 
with magic. I, I really can't explain it. That's why I'm doing a whole blog entry about all these movies eventually. Um, very soon. I will be doing a blog entry very soon about these. You'll learn all about them. Then the Slayer's OVAs, which I picked up at Dragon Con, coincidentally. Girl Power, Wandava Style. Uh, I haven't seen this yet. It's called Madonna. I think it's a it it's a school comedy movie. have no idea what to say about it yet, but eventually I will. Uh, Pony Pony Dash, Lucky Star, Genshikin. This was a surprise to me when I first saw it. This is actually really awesome. You'll learn a lot of stuff about anime culture watching this film, watching this series. Absolutely a whole lot of good stuff. Animation Runner Kuromi and the second Kuromi film. These you'll learn about the animation industry in Japan quite a bit, as well as comedic antics. Otaku no Video, you'll learn all about you know the otaku culture, which is actually, back in the 1980s, it really wasn't a good thing to be called, and it still isn't in Japan. Um, it's really a word that we sort of repurposed over here as meaning, well, people over here have always sort of been ostracized for being geeks and nerds, even back in the 1980s as well. So it's it's really sort of a, it's really sort of an ugly lifestyle when you get right down to it. If you're really, really obsessed, I wouldn't call myself totally obsessed, but, you know, some people really are. And this movie tells you all about people who have lived that lifestyle and people who have left that lifestyle with real live interviews with real people, not just the animation. And then the awkward Kecko Common. I was so curious about this one that I had to check it out, but it's really not worth more than one watch, trust me. So, oh man. Uh, so that ends the DVDs and Blu-rays. But now, down here, we have my CDs, which consist of a a total of, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, uh, 9 Lupin the Third CDs. Because, see, for here we have uh, the Castle of Cagliostro limited edition CD soundtrack. We have the... 1980 soundtrack from the TV series, which also has songs that showed up in Cagliostro. We have uh, one of the other random soundtracks. There's a couple of random soundtracks that showed up with songs from the 70s and the 80s. Uh, this one is for the Pink Jacket series, which there's only apparently one soundtrack for that. And then this one I'm quite happy to have. This is all of the ending theme songs to the movies between 1989 and 1999. And quite a few of these are really amazing songs in their own right. They're, they're all lyrical, of course. Very beautiful stuff. And then I have Sweet Lost Night, which I was happy to get because a lot of the music on this is quite good. Um, all written by the same guy, by the way. The same guy, Yuji Ono, has written all the music for Lupin the Third since 1977, and only recently has he uh, stepped down for other people to take up the the mantle of Lupin the Third composer. This is Lupin the Fire, which is a uh, rap CD with a couple of singles on it. Um, the Lupin the Fire song itself is really amazing. It's like the the coolest remix sort of song I've ever heard um, about Lupin the Third. It's really epic. And then there's the Lupin the DJ battle, which this includes a couple of random techno dance track songs of famous Lupin music, which I was very glad to have because they have a Castle of Cagliostro theme song on here called Fire Treasure. That's the actual theme in the movie. Um, and it's been remixed here into a really epic dance techno track. Totally have to check that out on YouTube sometime if you're interested. Then I have the motion picture to Slayers, Slayers Return. I have the uh, Slayers Megumix, which is all of Megumi Hayashibara's music for the Slayers franchise. I think it's every single song as far as I can make out. So I assume the other songs that are missing from the Slayers franchise were not written by her or sung by her. 
Then we have Iravati, which is another collection of her music, including the theme themes that I did get on this, but songs that she wrote outside of Slayers that do not appear on these, so that's why I was glad to have that. Uh, Deja Vu is one of my favorite songs of hers now. Then there's Kotoko. I, was, I, I heard the Kotoko... It's, I think it's Agony. Kotoko's Agony is a really beautiful song. And Re Sublimity, Sublimity is also a really nice song. I was I was glad to finally get this because I've heard Agony for so many years that I've I've desperately wanted to get it on CD. Then there's the uh, Soul Eater CDs, and after that we have uh, about five soundtracks to Miyazaki films. We got Nausicaa, we've got castle in the sky this is the original version not the remade version and personally i like the special edition soundtrack that they wrote in like the early maybe it was the late 90s early 2000s i forget which but i i far prefer it from the original version because nausicaa sounds awesome with the techno synth music and so does uh tortoro but I don't like it in Castle of the S- in the Sky because I'm so used to the the newer version. It's so much more epic sounding. It's it's really preferable. Um, Kiki's Delivery Service. I have Porco Rosso in here, but I don't think it's the official version because not all the music is on here. It's it's sort of just an oddity. It's it's actually not the mu- all of the music you hear in the film. Um, and then I have the English release of Princess Mononoke which I assume Miramax put out separately. Um, Cats Don't Dance. This is really hard to find on CD. This is expensive, people. The only reason I have it is because I asked for it for a birthday present because I love the opening theme song. Um, I I love all the songs in it. In fact, I'm very fond of them since my childhood. Space Jam. Uh... A goofy movie and an extremely goofy movie. All the music in these two films are really good. And then I have Kim Possible. A lot of the songs on this ain't half bad either. It's a lot of nostalgia. Um, That's pretty much it for the good soundtracks in there. Then I have my PS2 games, which includes Dark Cloud and Dark Cloud 2. Absolutely worthwhile games for you. Uh, Rogue Galaxy isn't quite as good as Dark Cloud 2 is, but it's also decent. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is a really interesting game. Attack and the Power of Juju and the second, uh, the sequel. Crash ba- uh, Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. Skyrim, which is the PC version. I'm really happy I got that. I've actually played through the whole game about 160 hours, 170 hours. Um, only now have I decided I'm going to start over again. Then I got Diablo 3, which I actually got a little too late, because the new version is already out. Um, I don't know if the PS3 version actually has the whole original game built into it, or if that's just for the PC version, but I'm going to get the, the, the Reaper sequel at some point. Then I got Dead Space, the, uh, the Ratchet & Clank HD collection, Ratchet & Clank Future Tools of Destruction and a Crack in Time, Rayman Origins, Rayman Legends, Absolutely beautiful games. The Sly Collection, Thieves in Time, Nino Kuni, um, and then the God of War Collection, which I've beaten the first game. And before my battery goes dead, we have all of these films down here, which uh, are TV series. We've got the Thumb Films Collection, uh, DuckTales, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, the first two seasons of My Life as a Teenage Robot. The Totally Spies Seasons Part 1 and 2, Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, The Real Ghostbusters, Get Smart, um, and then just a couple of random films, including some Veggie Tales. So, that's about it, folks. Um, if you liked any specific titles in there that you want to learn more about, I highly recommend you write me up on my uh, Twitter or my... Um, facebook or my the the description below this in the comments section or on my blog if you want to learn about any of the titles that you see here write me a comment there write me a suggestion and i will see if i can do a review on it specifically so take care everybody